We have some of the best um, search marketing people up here. Um, my name is Kate Morris. I'm an independent search marketing consultant with Marketing Demons. Um, and I'm going to let each of our panelists introduce themselves. So, Carolyn? I'm Carolyn Shelby. I am the Web Experience <coughs> Manager at the United Way of Metropolitan Chicago. I have also been building websites. Um, I actually owned an ISP in the mid-90s, started in 94. Um, since then, I've built a lot of sites. I specialize in going to companies that have big old clunky sites that desperately need to redesign, and I help them build some SEO into it and also preserve their existing inbound links and existing rankings and improve through the relaunch. Um, typically, a lot of companies lose a huge amount of traffic during a relaunch, and they don't necessarily maintain their old URLs, lose backlinks. It's very messy. Uh, I'm Jane Copland. I'm a search marketing consultant at um, a, an agency in London called IEMA. Um, previously to that, I worked um, as an SEO consultant for um, SEO Moz in Seattle. Um, I work primarily with clients in gambling, um, telecoms, and finance, um, pretty much pure SEO, a uh, little bit of social media, but not very much of that anymore. Um, and I still do some work for SEOMOS up in Seattle as well, but remotely. Uh, Christy Bolsinger, I currently work as a search or a social media marketing strategist at Real Networks. We have our social team in that group as well, and we focus mostly on organic and on the team I'm in. Um, before that, I was actually in HR, so. You can't hear? Is that better? I feel like that's really loud. Yeah, yeah. To, to, to us, it sounds like we're yelling at you. Yeah. That's why we keep backing up. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll start over. Can you hear me now? That's okay. what she said. Uh, okay, so my name is Christy Bolsinger. I currently work as a social media marketing strategist at Real Networks. Um, I'm part of the SEO search optimization team as well. So I do a lot of uh, mostly organic. I tend to shy away from PPC. My brain doesn't work like that. Um, I've been doing this for several years. Before that, I was a consultant um, through grad school, and before that, I was in HR. So, and we don't care about that anymore. So, you know. <laughs> we all come from very different backgrounds. <laughs> very different. <clears throat> I am apologizing for my voice in advance, just so you know. Um, Crystal Watson. I work for Compass Knowledge Group uh, during the day, <laughs> and um, I do work for the search marketing team. Um, we do higher ed marketing, um, social media, SEO, landing page, all that stuff. And then at night, I'm a Twitter holic. That's all. Okay, so basically, I asked a couple of uh, different people, not just SEOs, to come in here. Um, Christy, especially because she specializes in social media. Social media is becoming a huge part of search marketing. So I like having a all-around approach to search engine optimization, not just code. So you should get just about everything here. Um, so the first site we are going to go over, okay, let me, for, for the people that came in, I thought I saw people come in, okay, so here are the rules. Um, you bring me a business card, we will review your site. We don't review competitors, we don't review something that you do not own, it's just not fair. Um, however many sites we have, that is how much time we're, that's, that'll, tell me how much, how, how much time we have to spend on each site. We'll try to move on and get to everybody's. Um, Taylor, raise your hand. When, when I pull up your site, Taylor, please raise your hand. Taylor will bring you a mic. Please tell us what pain points you're having, all that kind of stuff. Um, that way we can tailor our recommendations to you rather than just going off on stuff that you don't need to hear. Um, sometimes uh, on site review panels, we give recommendations that you already know, but you don't have control over. So if, if, if you're looking for something specific, please tell us. Okay, so the first one we're going over is best web buys. Okay, my, uh, probably at the bottom. Is there a switch at the bottom? Oh, wait. You Hello? There you go. There you go. Okay. So tell us about your site. Uh, I'm Steve Loyola from Best Web Buys, and uh, we're a comparison shopping website. Uh, of those tabs on there, the two most popular are the, on the ends, the books and the bikes. Um, the middle ones, I have to admit, have kind of been neglected lately. So 
Um, and our biggest market is probably college students doing textbook price comparisons. Okay. And until recently, we were probably too dependent on Google, getting like 70 to 80 percent of our traffic from Google and almost all that deep linking. Mm -hmm. Um, and recently, end of November, we took a really bad hit, so I'm really... And, and the thing is, I mean, sadly, I can't blame it on anything we did because we've kind of been a little lazy as far as changes. Yeah. Now, maybe that's actually the problem. I don't know. Um, Who is starting to outrank you in some of your search terms? Well, see, that, that's the thing. I mean, uh, it, w there, I mean, we've got. I mean, there are a lot of comp a lot of competitors, a lot of other you know book comparison sites, mm -hmm. and um, there's not any one term. I mean, I looked a, a year ago at our stats, and the most popular term that sent us traffic was still only 0.2 percent. I mean, okay. but we had 400,000 terms sending us traffic. So, okay. I mean, yeah. It's all long tail. Okay. Um, but that 400,000, this January is now. I, I, I don't have it in front of me. It was like 60,000. So it's like our long tail just really dropped out. Really dwindled. Okay. Um, but I mean, yeah, there's, there's at least a dozen competitors that are still showing up for, you know, even some niche ones and typical things like, you know, cheap textbooks and stuff like that. But we haven't been totally banned because we're still number one for things like Freud books and Steinbeck books and, you know, like things okay. like that. So I don't know. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, ladies. Well, the first thing that I see is that um, the site resolves with and with. Sorry, the site resol resolves with and without the dub dub dub. So, uh, one should redirect to the other. Probably um, the non dub 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 version redirect to because that's what you're using. Um, and the second thing I see right off the bat is that um, along the top where you've got some tabs, um, welcome books, music, which are images, not um, uh, text as far as I can tell, and I haven't seen if you've done any image replacement on that or not. But um, if you click on electronics, for example, it goes to slash electronics slash index.html. Um, if you take off the index.html, um, the page still loads. Slightly different order of content, it seems, but that's um, basically two pages on the site for each um, two URLs on the site for each page, which, can, which is duplicate content, can compete against each other. Um, it's just generally not best practice. So um, you're linking with the, dot, with the slash index.html. Um, the recommended way to do that would be to remove all the dot index.html's, either put the uh, canonical meta tag on them or redirect back to um, just slash electronics. And, and uh, yeah, as far as the www, I realize I need to do the, the redirect on that, but at least in Google Webmaster Tools, I have gone yeah. in and told okay. them, always WW. So if you, if it, you do you it. That should take care of it. And Google's pretty good at yeah. that. Know, it's I just it's best practice. It and if you've done that in Webmaster Tools, it's um, hard. I guess there are a few other search engines, maybe. Yeah. Well, and the differences between the, the inconsistency in linking back to the index pages with the index.html versus just slash, it divides the number of links that you have. So instead of having 500 links all pointing at one page, you've got maybe 400 and maybe 100 or maybe 80 and one of them's a little bit different. So you need to be really consistent about that and make sure that you're doing the 301 redirects correctly. Um, the other thing I noticed immediately was that you have no H tags at all. There's no title tags. I mean, there's page title, but there's no H tags on the home page. So if you... You can use it. The bots don't understand the pictures and the layout. All they understand is the, the weight that we can convey to them. If you were to use proper H tags, it's like an outline. It says, this is important, this is subordinating points. You know, This is what we want you to understand the page to be. Otherwise, you just have equally weighted bits of words all on a page, and they have to figure it out themselves. So let's help them out and give them some a little bit of structure to, to jump onto. Um, and there's some things you could do with style sheets so that you wouldn't have pictures. You could have them you know, displayed from the back. Um, I think I'd probably move price comparison shopping in your title, maybe to the front if that's what you're targeting, at least on the home page. There's some slightly inconsistent um, ways that you're creating URLs here because um, if you look, you're doing um, 
for the tab that um, links to photo labs, you have photo underscore print underscore service underscore comparison dot HTML. Um, it's a little bit outdated now, but you, it's still true that you should really use hyphens as opposed to underscores for word separation. Hyphen, uh, underscores used to be characters um, unto themselves in computer programming, so using hyphens is just um, what Google's always recommended that we do. Um, then you're using the .html there, um, but then one tab along for hot deals, you're not using the um, .html. I don't know if anything sits under hot deals, if there are any pages, if it's a subfolder, if it's just an end. No. Um, I would probably put the .html on the end there if that's what you're planning on using throughout the site. Because you, although if I add the trailing slash to hot deals um, at 404s, it probably should redirect back to um, the page without the trailing slash. Generally, just consistency is what you're after in the way that you create URLs like that. Like if you use the HTML good, if you don't, if you just keep it the same throughout the site. To generally, perhaps avoid duplicate content in strange 404s and stuff like that. OK, and can, can we, uh, the uh, hyphen versus underscore thing, because that's actually a, a big thing we're working on right now, trying to make, because we, you know, we've got 6 million books. So each, you know, we've got 6 million URLs. Um, and we like to have a search engine friendly URL for that that includes the title. Yeah. Um, so you're saying that uh, we should separate the, the words in the title of the book with hyphens, not with underscores? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? And what's the thinking behind that? Does They've gotten better about it, but originally the reason it was such a huge deal is because the search engines would read the hyphen as a separator, and the underscore makes it one big word. Oh. It seemed to act as a character rather than as a word separator. Well, it was an operator that they used yeah. to do special searches on their own, so they couldn't, they couldn't treat it as though it were a separator because they needed it for their testing purposes to do stuff. OK, so uh, I just, so just confirm. I mean, the fact that we've been using underscores for a long time, um, okay. it's, it's so important to do hyphens that, that I I should switch to hyphens even if there's some minor hit as far as having all the URLs change? You should be able to 301 redirect. Oh, the yeah. Actually, I've got, I've got rewrite rules, so actually, none of it really matters really anyway, because yeah, all it really looks at is the ISBN in the, in the URL anyway. So. Yeah, I don't think you're going to see a hit, especially if you're 301ing, because you should be able to do in HT access just, hey, every time you encounter an underscore, make it a hyphen. And, and if anything, she's, a 301 she's our technical is, guru. Yeah. She knows yeah. that. A 301 is going to lose very little in terms of um, the link equity. So, you know, you're not. To, I would say that it's worth doing. Um, Google's pretty good at that too. So. Okay, so deep into your pages. So I just pulled up one of your URLs, doing a site colon just to see how many pages you had. And yeah, if, if you have six million pages, I think Google had listed originally like. 600,000. 600,000. So, yeah, you have a lot that aren't getting there oh in the supplemental, God. whatever. Um, but that's, but I don't want to focus on that. So, you are losing traffic to the um, long tail. Um, what, what, what I've seen in, in the affiliate space and, and recently um, is that Google started doing the whole building, uh, taking big brands and putting them up top to test that out. I actually had a client who is not a price comparison site, but I have friends who have them. Um, and they got knocked down too. Um, and what I'm seeing personally, and I can't say for the industry, what I'm seeing personally is that in certain industries where Google started testing that out, some of those sites are coming back, but it's slowly. And basically Google was testing to see which ones were better. Are the original companies a better result or are these better optimized sites that are comparisons better results? And there's some industries where all state Dot com and, and all the insurance companies, those were better. But then there are, then there are other places like this where people want to do the, the price shopping. You have some excellent, excellent links coming into you. Absolutely fantastic. Um, very natural looking, everything else. The issue that I see here on your deep pages is, number one, they, they, they brought up that, that, that you're not using H tags. Definitely, that is the number one thing because that is one of the core things you can do to tell the search engines this is this is what this page is about. But the other part of this is that because because you're a price comparison site, you do want that table showing up first. But you have all this white space over here to the side, to my right side, um, 
find and place in there, um, database-wise, about the book. You need text. You need to put more about these books on here, not necessarily for the end user. You need it for the search engines. They need to know what this page is about, and all they're seeing is, by this, a whole bunch of numbers, ISBN numbers, things like that. Your URL structure, yes, please. I love that you're going to be working on that, putting the name of the book within the URL, because the ISBN number is not, um, as a former college student, yes, and I used to work in a bookstore, yes, I look for stuff by ISBN. I'm not your typical college student, though. I used to work in a bookstore, I know what ISBN numbers are. Um, most people are going to be searching for that title, whatever they get from their professors. So the most, so the more you can put on here in text, the better. And the more you can structure it with H1 tags, things like that. Um, I've heard some people say selectively using um, styling can have an influence on things. So use marketing to point out the best parts of this book. Keep that table there because that's what's converting you, but you do need to use that, that white space to give the search engines more to work with. And I think that might help you down the road. One other URL point, um, sorry to keep packing back on this, but um, your link back to the home page um, in your navigation under welcome, um, I would also suggest having the logo link back as well, but that links to um, just a dot com slash index.html. So <coughs> you have a site loading on the route, and then you're telling search engines and people um, actually the canonical home page is slash index.html. So would fix that um, as soon as possible, too. Well, and the alt, the alt tag for the home page icon says home. You could yeah, no. take that opportunity perhaps to be a little bit more clear about where they're going. You know, with the book descriptions, I know several companies that have really large catalogs. They needed a lot of content. You can hire someone really cheaply to just write a couple paragraphs describing the book um, or describing whatever the product is, as long as each one of the entries is unique. Um, and that was a problem I ran into with a plumbing manufacturer. There's only so many different ways you can describe a, a kitchen faucet, but we had to have unique ways to do that. Um, if if the manufacturers are providing you with descriptions, I would highly recommend against just automatically including those. Make sure someone's writing them and they're distinct and unique from what the manufacturer's giving you, otherwise you're gonna look like whoever else decided to use the manufacturer's description. Right, yeah, internally we've, we've just had this discussion. Um, yeah, because I mean the, the easy options for us are, I mean we, we license the Muse database so we get reviews and stuff from them or we could pull down stuff from Amazon. But in either case, we're going to have the same stuff as lots of other sites. Well, why don't so. you make it so people can submit their own reviews? Yeah, exactly. I think that's, that's the way to go, right? Because then it is unique to our site. Yeah. You know, and if you can offer um, you know, some kind of incentive to your, to your clients to get them to come back and write reviews. Um, I've bought shoes online. I buy, I buy you know, makeup in a store that also happens to have an online web presence. As soon as they know that I've made a purchase, I get an email that says, hey, why don't you come on back and tell us how, how you like it, you know? I have a question about some links um, on the homepage that I'm looking at here. Under what's hot, I've got um, a link to lifespan development. Um, and the URL um, after the .html has, is, it, is that um, parameter after the .html being used as a tracking code? What? Um, so on the homepage, I don't know if it loads. One of the items on the home page, and then you've got um, the um, ISBN well, number. Yeah. Okay, so. If, oh, um, sorry, yeah, I guess I was just talking to the mic. Yeah, we use that for internal tracking to, to see like how traffic follows through our site. Yeah. Okay, the, the problem with that is if I remove the internal tracking and just load the HTML, um, the page still loads, and that is duplicate content. You're linking to it from the home page, Google Spiders with the tracking code. Um, I, I, I told Google and Google Webmaster Tools to ignore I, iSource as one of the parameters. Okay, um, that should probably take care of it. I'd still, it would be great if you could do it with like a non-click event or even using a hashtag. Um, a hashtag because Google won't spider anything post a hashtag. So it okay. um, would still be better to use either one of those two options there. Okay, thanks. Okay, so I'm going to move on. If you have any questions <laughs> for us afterwards. Oh, 
Did, did, did you, you have something? Yeah. Can jump? Oh, okay. I can't yeah, hear oh, you guys just, very just well, so I don't know if you mentioned you. that there's not oh. alt text on the okay. pictures. Or the ones the alt text <laughs> on the images that you have on the page? Yeah. We're showing that there's missing alt text on there. And uh, on like, like the, I'm on nav bars or? On the images, like the phones and Yeah. And okay. It's in the, in the I don't know why we're missing that. And Thank like you. really quickly, yeah. this is just a pet peeve that your um, your header doesn't have a link back to the home. Mm -hmm. You could just throw that in. Yeah. There. <laughs> if you if you Click look up on. at up at the main screen right now, I pulled information on this um, picture right here. Uh -huh. And within here, you do you do not have an alt tag. That could be another way to yeah. help out. Yeah. I don't know camera. why we're missing that. Thanks. <laughs> and so. one other thing from a user perspective, and I don't like I said I, we couldn't really hear down here what what they were saying. But once you get onto like the <clears throat> the books page or the bikes page, it's Im almost impossible to get back to bestwebbikes.com. Yeah, it's a from what I can well, tell. Actually, it's, maybe it's just unclear. It's that welcome tab. Welcome. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I would have never known that. <laughs> Wasn't that obvious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, didn't Thanks. work. <laughs> the convention is to the convention would be to have your um your the best web eyes like link that back would be great. or you for the home button to go to back to the home page. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've I've Thanks. actually gotten yelled yeah. at before for people assuming Thank that. you, thank you. So what you're saying is right from the really helpful. Yes. 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 <laughs> that would be fantastic. You know, if you start diving down a rabbit hole and you decide that this is, you know, maybe isn't the exact product you want, but you just want to go back up one level, there are a lot of people that don't know how to use the back button. It really is amazing. Oh, and your mobile site does not automatically come up. Yeah. You actually have to click it. That's why I got out my iPhone. If I pull up your website, just your domain, your mobile site does not, that's not the first thing that comes up. Your big site comes up. And if you're going to have a mobile site, have it automatically detect and come up. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Brett. Right. There you go. You're in the back. Mike. There you go. All right. Brett, what issues are you having? So um, I'm Brett, and I've, uh, I'm a blogger, so I've been doing this for about eight months. I'm totally the content guy. I know nothing about what goes on behind the curtain. Okay. I have uh, outsourced all of that. Okay. And, um, and I'm just trying to uh, develop a lot of good content. In the last two months, I've incorporated video, and so everything I do, I video first, and then I build text around it. Um, in the beginning, I didn't provide much text, but a lot of my traditional readers and the aggregators like to scan text. So I've had to include a lot more text than I really want to, just so that those traditional folks pick me up. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there are some people at work that can't get to the, um, can't play the video at work. Yeah. And, and it's nice to have the story below the right. video. And, um, you know, I currently do not monetize my blog. I mean, the only thing that's going on back there is an Amazon affiliate. Um, and I'm in such a niche market that um, I'd like to, am, like to monetize it, but I want to do so in a way that preserves the clean and professional look of it because of my, my audience. I think okay. this is the home page, like this is it. Well, That's you've kind of got the opposite problem that they had in that you've got a lot of H tags, but I don't think they're being used correctly, especially on the home page. You have an H1, which there should only be one per page, defined for every single title of all of the entries on your home page. What's what is the you know if you had an outline, what is the point of your home page? It's your home page, so perhaps that should on your home page H1 should be the title of the of the site. Subsequent pages, the H1 should be the title of the post or whatever the topic is of that page. You've got a lot of H2s. H2 should be a supporting point. H2 is not for archives or categories. Your your H tag should always have keywords in them that support the overall theme of your site. Wasting an H2 on categories and archives, it's, it's, it's giving off the wrong impression about your site. You definitely don't need an H2 for your blog role. Um, another thing to look at, um, your entire header on the page, when I say header I mean um, the photograph, um, the quotation and then the links down the side. Um, none of that appears to be text, it's all in an image. Um, again, I haven't looked to see if you're using CSS image replacement on that, but um, any time that you can use HTML on the page text as opposed to using images, um, it makes it a lot easier for Google to understand what the page is about, especially in an important part of the page such as um, the header. 
Okay, so yeah, all of, all of these are they're they're all pictures. There's yeah, no there's no, there's no way to do alt text. I mean, at the very least, if you if you really if you're really married to this header, you have to chop it up into itty bitty little pieces and use CSS to reassemble it so that you can have alt you know, defined alt tag for each one of those links. Because right now, the bots look at that and it's like, ooh, it's a great big picture, and I don't know what it does. So it's it's really it's doing a lot of damage. One thing too, from a so from a from a social perspective, um, I like obviously that you have your social links here. Um, they are below the fold, and there's a lot of space above the fold still. That you know, I, there's you know positive use for for negative space. Did you say that again? I I didn't catch that. Below the fold, you have all your social links before below the fold, with the exception of your newsletter sign up. And there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of real estate above that is not necessarily being used, and sometimes that's a good thing to utilize negative space in that way. Um, but if it were me, I would want to see those above the fold so they're more prominent and in your face. Um, let me point out one thing. She is on a Mac, and our screens look much different than most typical PCs do. So we have a much smaller above the fold. To everybody here, when you're designing sites, please make sure that you're paying attention to everybody's screen resolution. Um, especially if you have web savvy users coming to you, if we have toolbars, keeps pushing it down. Um, be sure that you know everybody's above the fold when you're designing, because not everybody has a monstrous screen. I usually have both running just because. So, just something to think about. Um, one thing that I'm noticing, and just for commerce purposes down the road, um, all of your posts, for, for the most part, when you're a blog writer, and, and most of us up here are, um, you want your post to be the, the first thing that, that people hit when they're searching for stuff because you want it to be relevant to, to what they're searching for. Um, are you using WordPress to yes. do this? Okay. Um, I, I have a point one. Okay. Um, you need to use one of the plugins that assigns a different description depending on your post. The post that I pulled up right now uses your general description of your site. Um, and if people are searching for specific keywords that, that are in the post, it's possible Google will pull the text within the post, but not necessarily. So um, you want to help them out any way possible there. Um, and, and there are lots, I can't come up with the names off the top of my head right now, but get with me afterwards, I'll give you the name of a few of them that do it automatically for you. Um, and that can help you down the road. You have a lot of real estate down both sides. And all of this stuff, um, I'm using, by the way, I'm using Chrome, so there's a lot of formatting issues right here. I don't know what these little boxes are, but um, you have a lot of a lot of area available for advertising, um, so you just need to play with what works best for you. When um, I speak on uh, landing page optimization, whatever the post is about, you, um, is, in, in WordPress, your template's the same, so you're always going to have the same advertising, but play with stuff. Get a couple of, of ads, a couple banner ads, and, and start playing with them and see how things work. Um, and just test things out because, because everybody's going to be different, and especially with you, since you're not selling something, you're giving people ideas, you're going to be different than most people in here because they're selling stuff. Um, so it is definitely different, but, but, but you have the real estate for it. You just need to see what the best combination for you is. And especially what Chrissy said, a lot, a lot of your social, a lot of your stuff is down at the bottom. You can push that up here if you can redesign that top part. Put those up there. Integrate it with that top area, and you can build more campaigns through your social efforts that way. One of, uh, if you don't want to use a plugin, one of the quick things to do in your WordPress templates to get your descriptions on the individual post pages to be unique is change what it's retrieving for the dis for the meta description. There's um, a line of code. It's a uh, PHP the underscore excerpt and then parentheses. If you stick that up where it's pulling the blog description, so take out the blog description, which is what it's, it wants to use, and tell it to use the excerpt instead, it's going to go, oh, OK, instead of using what's in this part, I'm going to look at this post, and I'm going to take the excerpt, which it already knows how to make, and I'm going to stick that in there. 
It might end up being a little bit longer than you need for a description, but it's going to be a lot more accurate and it's going to be a better reflection of, of what that page is about. Um, and as far as marketing and advertising, even just because it's WordPress, you could definitely, there's a lot of options to target your advertising and you can even do some behavioral targeting if you can set up OpenX. Um, it allows you to set up channels and be contextually sensitive to what ads you're displaying in which areas. Um, I set that up and I've got that working with a WordPress site. I, got, I think I got it working in an afternoon and I had four channels set up and if you're coming in to look at sports, it's only showing you sports ads. It's, I mean, it's free and it was pretty easy. Um, I think, anyone else? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, how are you gaining, like, how are people finding your site? How are people finding my site? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you know, I was pretty obscure until Twitter came along. And, okay. um, and Twitter just, and, and aggregators like Smart Brief. The main thing I noticed is you are totally optimized for your name. Yeah. That is it. <laughs> like, you are all out there for Brett Simmons, Brett L. Simmons, your anchor text is all Brett Simmons. So I think I would focus more on finding those links to like the leadership and, 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 and like putting that in your descriptions and things and put your name towards the end instead. Cause nobody's search, well, maybe very few people are searching out for your full name and more so for like leadership tips. And yeah, when I first started, I'm not, I had to brand myself as Brett L. Simmons because there's another Brett Simmons that's a musician. Sure, but, but I, I guess the, the, either the point is is that um, it'll be easier for people to find you for the things that you want to be found for yeah. rather than just your name. Um, and with 177 backlinks to your site, that's a good start. But I mean, I would definitely put some effort towards building out some links for your keywords rather than just your name because you've got 74 for Brett Simmons, which is good if there's a you know rock star out there. All for <laughs> yeah, well, there's... Oh, Rockstar. 39 for Brett L. Simmons, but yeah, I mean, you've got positive organizational behavior. Everything else is your name, so I would definitely spend some time and effort. And you know, I would. You can use social media exceptionally well to do link building. So, have you thought about writing guest posts on other people's blogs? Um, I've done a little bit of that, and I also blog at the Student Branding Blog now. So I am a I'm a blogger over at Dan Schwabell's uh, Student Branding Blog. Just started that about a month ago. Okay, well that's a good way to, to get additional traffic into your site and to generate some thematically relevant links and have a little bit of control over the anchor text. So that's, I definitely continue doing that because that's gonna be a good way to, to proceed. Do you um, get any traffic to speak of um, from your YouTube channel that you're using to post videos on? No, not at all. No, I, I, I kind of backed into the YouTube. The YouTube is not even branded on my name. I opened it a couple of years ago before I understood YouTube what is another way that you can help with the keywords, is making sure that when you go in and you do put your videos in there, that you're attaching the appropriate keywords to those as well. Um, and if you do a lot of video blogging, you can actually drive a decent amount of traffic back to your site that way. I haven't been paying much attention to that. I've just been throwing them up and <laughs> worrying about how to get them in my site and sized correctly. But... I'm going to start paying more attention to that. You're, you're, you're doing well with them so far. So, yeah, just it sounds like it's just about time just to kind of take the next step. So, yeah, you're doing well. Very well. Very well. Thank you. Okay. Post Affiliate Pro 4. Raise your hand. All right. Where is it? Taylor? Wait, what? What is it? Um, quality.com. Oh, quality. <laughs> Hi. My name is Victor Zeman, and... Uh, I own company Quality Unit, which develops Post Affiliate Pro. It's a software, affiliate software for owned uh, affiliate programs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like, yes, we are maybe on fifth place on Google, but I think uh, we have the best features in our price, price range of affiliate software. So I would like to ask, what do you think we should improve if we want to be first on Google? And second question, what do you think? Should we display pricing of our products or should we um, give prices to customers upon request? What's the best approach in this category of products? How much do you usually sell for? Like, what's your typical customer? Like, on just an average 
I mean, are, are, is, is your product like thousands of dollars, or do you do pricing like Pricing is bucks a month? from uh, $200 up to $1,000. Is it per month or is it per year? One time. One time? Okay. And uh, hosted I, solution costs just $19 or 20 If I get to a site where they want me to send them my information to look at the price, I go find something else. Because my assumption is either I can't afford it, or they're never going to leave me alone once they get my name. I, I, from a user perspective, I totally back what she just said, but we've also done, um, in my company, we've done some recent A-B testing on pricing and whether or not to place it, and for our niche, um, it, it didn't work out for us to, to put the price on. Um, our price actually only ends up coming up in the cart, the shopping cart, at the very end of the shopping process. That worked for us, though. We did a lot of testing to figure out, you know, how to do that, so... While I agree, for me, I want to see the price. Um, it depends on, you know, your your traffic and the people that are coming to your site. So, I I would suggest testing on that. Yes. But would you like to see the price even if it will cost, for example, five thousand dollars? It depends who I am. If I'm buying shoes for me, I don't want to see that. If I'm buying enterprise level software solutions for my company, five thousand dollars isn't such a big deal. So it really depends on the people that are searching and their intention, and it, it depends on a lot of different things, which is why I would suggest testing that and see what happens to your conversion rate when you do that. Which is why I asked about your pricing, because if you already set pricing, that kind of gives you something to work with. If you're, if you're a customized solution, you don't really want to put it up there because it's, it's different. Um, as search engine marketers, we don't, not all of us will put up pricing because every client is different, every site is different, and we don't want to say, oh, a site review is going to cost $500. Well, that's great on one site, which has five pages and is not in a very competitive market, but when you get another site, which is in a hugely competitive market, you get a real estate person in LA, really, mm -hmm. not going to, that's, that's just not going to work. So um, it, it really depends on who you're talking to, and you're talking to affiliates. And so you really have merchants. to test... Merchants. We, we are talking to merchants. Merchants? Yeah. Okay. Because they buy the system for their affiliate program. And they operate the affiliate program mm -hmm. on our software. Yeah. So, so yeah. Christy is completely correct. You, you, you just need to test. Put up one, have an A-B test going, see which one's converting better, and then go with that and play with it more that way. And well, did you use for this testing uh, web, website optimizer from Google or any other tool? Or you just did it on the paper? No, no paper. <laughs> I'm in Seattle. We like trees. Um, <laughs> we have used a variety of different tools. Website optimizer was one of them. Um, whatever really works for you and your site, I would say. But I know a lot of people have good luck with that one. Do you want to grab the link one? Okay, so search engine optimization. Um, from a, a technical on-page SEO standpoint, the um, site looks pretty good. Um, I don't see anything that really stands out as a huge problem, um, although correct me if I'm missing anything. Um, I was interested in the drop-down at the top um, under English, which is what um, initially loads, and you have some um, subfolders for different languages, which in my opinion, is probably the best way of uh, separating, out by, separating out by language because you've got qualityunit.com slash DE um, for German, um, nothing for English, ES for Spanish, etc. And I was wondering if you had uh, geo-targeted those two specific countries in the um, site's Webmaster Tools account. So um, DE uh, geo-targeted to Germany, um, FR to France, etc. We don't do exactly geo-targeting, but uh, we try to open our website for more people. A lot okay. of uh, customers didn't know English so good okay. as me. <laughs> so but are, are most of them coming from the United States or from... Um, I'm they... from Slovakia. It's European Union. Okay, so I think um, th there's probably a fairly good argument to be made that you might want to look at um, targeting... Um, each um, language subfolder to um, geographic region. The only reason why that might not be a good idea is if you're um, also targeting, say you're targeting people in Mexico um, speaking Spanish, um, then you're probably going to have the um, slash a year subfolder rank better in Spain than you are in um, 
another country that speaks Spanish, but it is something to look at if you're solely European Union and you know that you're going to be getting um, the vast majority of your French customers from France as opposed to other French-speaking countries. As far as the HTML structure goes, I think if I were, if I were going to work on this site, I'd clean up the, the homepage a little bit just because what I'm looking at is you've got, you've got a lot of H2s. You've got a lot of H3s, a lot of H4s. H4s, I don't even know if a lot of people use those, but the ones that you have H2s on, okay, the first one, the ultimate and affiliate tracking software. I like that one, it's good. The next one, those who have seen new version four as we have it set up are super impressed. You don't have the name of, of the software in it. It doesn't say anything about affiliate tracking software. It's, you're putting a lot of weight on a cluster of words that don't necessarily really capture the essence of what's on the page. So I might not have that as an H2. If you're doing that, well, it's obviously stylized. I'd probably not have that as an H2. Definitely have it prominent. You can put it up there. It's a great quote. I just, I wouldn't say, hey, this is definitely what our stuff is about because the name's not in it. You want to focus on exactly what it is. It's affiliate tracking software. Um, you know, focus on explanations Who's this for? What kind of business benefits from this? How easy is it to set up? Um, you know, things like that. And then you've got an H2 for next step. That's one of those many things. I really get kind of hivey when I see people using H2s in their menus. Um, other than that, though, oh, um, that was about it for the, the structural. This is um, on the. Um, this is not on the post affiliate pro subfolder, but on the domain itself. I was wondering if there's um, a reason why you have the blog on a subdomain, um, and also support on a subdomain as opposed to um, well, using su subfolders. Support might. Are you using a different software program to handle your support, like Zendesk oh, yeah. or something? Tipo Free is used for website, and uh, blog is under WordPress. Okay. Well, even if the blog's under WordPress, you could have it as a um, as a subfolder, which would mean that it inherited more authority from um, the parent domain than it will ever get from being on a subdomain. So, um, do you think that it's better to merge all our subdomains into the main domain? How many subdomains do you have? For example, we have one for support, another for blog, for example, um, another for forum. Not, uh, not knowing the hosting uh, detail behind it, because obviously you can host a subdomain um, in a different location, which is often helpful, but um, for but pure... I mean, uh, for SEO optimization, if it's better to move subdomains to subfolders? It, it is better. They inherit um, more authority more, and more page rank passes between mm -hmm. the parent domain and um, yeah. a subfolder as opposed to a subdomain. And it seems like one of the um, reasons that this is um, true as far as Google is concerned, um, if you have a very strong domain like WordPress.com, I can go and create um, Jane's crap blog .com, and there's no way that it should inherit any um, authority from the really strong domain on which it sits. But um, if I had WordPress.com slash Jane's page, it, the, that page probably belongs to WordPress. Um, there's plenty of reason why it should inherit more. Um, so your blog probably could, um, or your, your blog could be stronger um, if it were sitting um, in a subfolder. Again, this is something that it's hosting and might be different. Is your blog WordPress? Mm -hmm. yeah. They're, yeah. they're using a content management system that might preclude them from having okay. easily easy yeah. subfolders. It would be, WordPress is great. Like if you're just using basic WordPress, you can put um, that into a um, subfolder and you can um, stylize it to mesh with the rest of the site really easily. You know, people won't um, notice that it's running off a different CMS. It would just, it would depend on how the, the main CMS, this um, Typo 3, if it, it depends on how it builds its subdirectories because there are some CMSs where it would be very difficult to create a subdirectory off of the root and have a different CMS installed in it. So I definitely check with your dev guys and see if it's possible. If it's, all is possible. <laughs> it's possible. You can, all, you can make it happen. All is possible. Okay. Yes. Well, that's that would good. Be, yeah, it would be different. There are some companies that you know they look at these things and they go, well, this is going to cost. This is going to take three months to implement, and it's going to be a lot of money. What's the cost benefit for us? And they don't want to invest the cost in implementing the solution. But if you if you can crack the whip and make it happen, 
Jane, okay. Jane's Ladies. right, that's going to be fast. Need to wrap that yeah, down. one thing I wanted to say really fast too is I noticed your blog doesn't have very many inbound links to it, and I know how much time and energy it takes to write a lot of content like that, um, and to really get the best you know, bang for your buck if you're going to spend all that quality time is to find ways to push it and use it to build links back to your site. If you're putting out that much content only to have 34 backlinks, unless something went wrong with the tool we're using, it seems disproportionate to the amount of time and energy you're probably putting in it, so you might want to investigate ways to maybe push more traffic there and, and get more out of that time that you're spending. Your biggest problem that I see is your backlinks. You to, is to, to, I'm just looking at that, that, that product. You, you have one good link to that page from the tool that I use. So I'm not saying you don't have a lot of backlinks, but we're talking good ones. I could only, that the, the software that I use only found one. So that's going to be your biggest thing. OK, we need to move forward. Uh, piano keyboard reviews. Hi, this, uh, my website actually started off as a static website for, for about a year and a half, and then I switched it over to Drupal and then on to uh, WordPress. Uh, the reason why I went to WordPress is that I found it somewhat cumbersome uh, technically uh, to keep it into uh, Drupal, so I moved it over to WordPress. Um, the, the pages on the, on the site itself, uh, the main brands there, like the Yamaha keyboards, Core keyboards, and so on and so forth, are, are page one Google. Uh, so these are strategic pages for me, where the tabs are, where it says Yamaha, Korg, and so on. Uh, and then the, uh, the posts themselves are actually reviews of various uh, different models of keyboards. So they involve long tail, long long -tail keywords. And uh, so I don't even have any links to those posts, and yet they do usually fairly well because they're long tail and they're specific models of keyboards. Uh, the, the strategy is to bring people onto the main pages, to the main brands, and then they'll go into the, the various keyboards that are there, or they'll use the search at the, the right. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the photos that you see there that are in the carousel are usually the top selling keyboards on my site. Uh, so I wonder if you could um, add something to that, have a look at it, and see if there's anything that I could do to improve on the site. Okay. Well, the first thing, um, you have the words, wait, let me pull up the source again. You, okay, sorry. Your H1 is piano keyboard reviews, but you're using an image to show that. It's it would be really easy to just have that all be text and still look nice the way you want it to. Um, in the masthead? Yeah, in the masthead. I'm, I'm just, it looks a little bit like you're hiding the H1. And it's not a huge deal, but I would probably feel more comfortable if it didn't have that appearance. Because when I look at it with the x-ray tool, the dot for the H1 is up in the corner. Like, you guys can't see it, so. Um, I'm going to stand up and gesticulate in front of the... Gesticulate. gesticulate. That's right. It's a real word. Look it up. There's a, there's a couple of, there are a couple of hidden links on the page um, as far as Google's concerned. Um, the tabs that you have uh, in the um, near the top right subscribe archives tags and popular. Um, if you click on popular, um, there are five links through to um, popular content that um, don't load on the page um, on uh, initial page load, but they're in the source code and Google sees them. I wouldn't be too worried about that. There's only five of them. However, um, it generally is best not to have things, um, especially links, hidden on a page. It can um, 
look a bit spammy if you're, especially if you're using um, keywords that are obviously important to you, like Yamaha, Casio, um, and hidden links. It's um, not necessarily the best way to go. I might think about um, moving that tab down and having it um, actually resolve on page load to a, to a um, human viewer. Now, I have tabs similar to this on some of my other sites, and I have to tell you that I've disabled the tags tab on mine. Be you have far fewer tags than, I, than uh, my site did. My site had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tags that would show up in this thing. All it does, it's like, with the page rank that you've got on your home page, right? It's sort of like a water balloon. And every time you have a link off of it, you're poking a hole in it and draining the page rank out. And even if you know follow some of the links, which you wouldn't want to do because these go to your own site, you're still, you're still diminishing the amount of, of weight you can throw at the, link, the, the good links that you want to throw weight at. If the tags aren't being clicked, and you can, you can set up um, heat map tests and see if they're actually, if, does anyone bother with them? If they're being completely ignored, you might as well nuke them. Um, crazyegg.com does heat maps. You can set it to do, you know, give it your home page, you put a little bit of code on it, say, okay, let's track a thousand, a thousand page views. It's going to show you what the hot parts of your page are, what the cold parts of your page are. This is a good time to say, well, all right, I've got a link off to an affiliate site. No one ever clicks on this. What do they click on? They click on the one here, they click on the one here. Okay, I'm gonna focus my efforts there. Get rid of the extraneous stuff so that you're not overwhelming the user with, you know, oh my God, there's so much stuff to click on, I don't know what to click on. When they're presented with too many choices, they choose nothing. Crazy Egg? Yeah, crazy like Crazy Egg.com, egg -like C-R-A-Z-Y-E-G-G. -E um, if you're running, running Google Analytics, they also have a click tracker. It's not as easy to see as Crazy Egg is, but it is free and you can um, see what is being clicked on on individual pages that way as well. One of the problems with the Google click tracker though is that if you have multiple links on your page to the same destination, let's say you've got three or four different links it to your home page, the, the, the destination. it's tracking at once and then it divides the number of clicks amongst all four of the, the links equally mm -hmm. and will say, okay, well this one got 25, this one got 25, this one got 25, and this one got 25, when in reality, this one got 100. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've noticed but that it's too as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, Google yeah. Analytics, yeah. Well, there's another problem with it though, is that it only shows for like links. So if people are trying mm -hmm. to click anywhere else that's not linked, it won't show that. Yeah, it, Crazy Egg will show you if people are accidentally clicking on things that they think should be clickable. Yeah. And that's another, I mean, that's a huge missed opportunity. If you it see is. that everyone's clicking on this thing and it doesn't do anything, header hey, image. you know, that's your, frustrating. Your header user. image. Yeah, and B, that's a great opportunity to make it go someplace. Because this is like the third site I think that we've seen that does this and it happens all the time, probably just um, worthwhile making the point that so many people will click on a logo to try and get home. Um, and this is across the board with um, most websites. And I've, I've heard people say ridiculous things like, it's so angry when I click on a, a logo and it doesn't send me home. And because this is the... Um, as a, probably the third site we've seen today that doesn't do it. Just make that a link. It's not going to uh, diminish um, the value of the, the, the page rank flowing around the site. You can even get rid of the home link um, if you do that because people are going to click on a logo before they look for a home or a welcome or anything like that. Can I ask a question? Sure. Does sure. corg-keyboards.html, that's one of the tabs at the top. Yes. And then, you, then you've got the list of categories below it Okay, so the category page is different than the Korg page. Yes. And then you've got another thing in the tags where you've got some brand names. You've got a lot of really similar words that go to different places. And I don't know that it's necessarily clear in that, that sub-navigation that you're going to a category page with a list of posts versus the Korg landing page itself. Okay. So Going. what you're saying is that under the roll-in, then below that on the category should be all roll-in categories? Is that what you're as I don't opposed know. to? Well, it, I guess it would depend on where you want to drive the user. Is the user coming to get news or is the user coming to get information about, does a category page have news or does it actually have the reviews? It actually has reviews under the category pages. 
Yeah. Um, so this we need to talk about your navigation afterwards. We have five minutes left. And oh, we have I'm one sorry, more go. site to do. Mm-hmm. Come talk to us about navigation afterwards because that was my biggest thing with you is that if somebody doesn't know what they're trying to buy, trying to get to a specific way via your main navigation, like, like just going through the products, is impossible. Absolutely impossible. We will come back to you, but we have to move on to the last site. We have five minutes left. Thank you very much. Sorry. All right. Last one. Sustain Adler. Adler. There you go. All right. Go for it. So this is a site that's really, it was launched two years ago and never done anything with. I'm inheriting it, and it's going to be a content-driven uh, affiliate site pushing green and sustainable products. Okay. Um, their original vision was they wanted to feature a lot of video. They wanted to develop a community of sustainablers. And I know that. Don't worry about that. <laughs> and and so so it's going to be very. Um, it's it's going to be the slow track developing content credibility and then recommending products. So. Um, my immediate issues that I see with it are the, the product categories, the solutions are down there way below the video. That, so that really should... So you don't stand out, yeah. Well, that, and that's, even that shouldn't be the main navigation, in my opinion. The cars, energy, food, gear, that should be the main navigation. Yeah. And when you yeah. get to the second page, yeah. that goes away. So, so I know there's some clear navigation issues here. Um, so, but... I guess so. I'm looking at it from a perspective. Okay, I want this to be an affiliate, mm-hmm. you know, affiliate site that is effective at getting people to, you know, to, to buy a product. And I think we've got to front and center the products a bit more. And I'm concerned about navigationally. And I just kind of want to get your recommendations. How would you, you know, how would you set up the navigation on this site? So if we go to this shelter category, for instance. The, the, currently, the only way to see products is it's just going to scroll down the page. There's no like sub navigation or anything. So I guess I'm just saying, here's a site that clearly isn't working. You know the goals. What would you do? Number one, all of those links up top need to be in the footer. Um, all of those are about you. Exactly. They, 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 if, if they want to know about you, they will start looking for about you. And most right. web users know to go down to the bottom. If they don't see it up top, and if you can't do a design with those links up in the very top that are just simple text links, put it down in the bottom. And until you see that people are looking for that via your search, leave that alone. You are right in the fact that you need to see if, do, do, do you have access to the analytics from before? I don't think don't? so. Okay. I don't, okay. Um, don't know if there's been any analytics being. It's okay. WordPress, though, okay. so I guess it's, you know. But. Some of it. Um, yeah. What, what you really need to do is, like, if, if you just want just very, very easy, take those, take basically within WordPress, make those shelter whatever else atop your um, URL structure. Please, please change your URL structure. Very easy, very simple to do within WordPress. You're going to have to redirect some of what has been done before. Okay. Um, but please, please, please do that because that will help your SEO in the long run. Okay. So um, by you mean long well, tail? What's wrong with this URL structure? It, well, it's like cat eight, seven. Yeah. Or something category. And yeah. On the so, it, so in other words, making the title be the the uh, file name, the URL. Absolutely you should, nothing. You're using Absolutely underscores then. for separators as well. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. are they? Yeah. 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 There, oh, there, yeah. there are a lot of basic SEO things that you need to have done right now. Okay. Um, again, one of us can go over those. Cool, with that'd you be fun. That'd be great. In a second, um, but I want to give Christy because she's she's actually going to be able to help you out with um, how to really utilize the the blog to like point people in different ways. And she's looking at me too, so I know she's got things to say. Yeah, I mean, well, one of the first things that I noticed when I got to this page is I don't have any idea what it's about or what I'm supposed to do. Um, and I think that I think that Kate said something about moving some of those, like the shelter, food, those links up. Up top. Did you? Y- using that as main navigation, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Krista made an observation, and I, I kind of tend to agree with her, that that whole box... And I don't know if it's the color. I, I'm, I'm not a designer. <laughs> but it, lo- it feels like an ad. It doesn't feel like any kind of navigational support. I didn't think it was nav. I thought it was something like some link. Like an like ad a hot, unit or hotline, hot prices or hotline. something. Hotline. <laughs> right, right. Okay. I see that. That whole black box at the top there, um, so I can see what, how it's happened. But um, the get involved button, which is red. If you go up from that with your cursor, the black um, area around your um, a big part of this, that's all part of the link, which is 
a little bit strange. It's unlikely to get you into any trouble, but it is weird. Um, and then I, I... I know, don't... The, the <laughs> they still have the eye stuck through hash marks on the images. huge amount of, of white, unused oh, white space. space. Oh, 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 oh I see what you're back. saying, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, but I, yeah, the, the, the first thing that I noticed on the page when I was just mousing around it is the fact that that whole area is a link. Um, yeah. And also, the, the photographs, um, I don't know if this is standing out on that screen or not, but the pictures underneath, you're a big part of this, all still have the iStock oh, yeah. photo yes, um, they, crosses on yeah, them. Yeah, those, so. those are placeholder. I, I don't know why they're still there. I but. can gift you some iStock credits later if you want. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> I got you, man. One thing also, you said this is going to be like content-driven. Yes. You're not highlighting your content in any way. You've got an awesome video, that's cool. Yeah, um, but you've got a lot of content down below. Mm -hmm. And you have to scroll a long way to see that. It's all very small. You could consider maybe it looks like you've got a two column layout here, perhaps going to a three if you want to do the multimedia so people can see the, for, the content. For the home page, you mean? Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. The oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm speaking specifically to the home page. Oh, sorry, right now. Yeah, not to harp on and be boring, but you've got the dub 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 versus non dub 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 thing yeah. both resolving, uh, and the, yeah. the logo doesn't link to either. God, okay, <laughs> I love you all. I do, I do have to cut us off. It is cool. time, and I know you guys are hungry and you want to go to lunch. Thank you for coming by. And if you have any questions, come up and talk to us. We are very, more than happy to stay here and give you some more tips, especially to those people that didn't get as much time and we told you to come back up here. So thank you very much. Enjoy your lunch, and we hope you enjoy the conference.